Today, I'm going to tell you how to be financially successful here on YouTube. All you have to do is steal other creators' videos. Or at least that's what a YouTube ad told me. That's it, that's my intro. Hi, I'm Amanda and you're watching Soul Entertainment. When the pandemic started getting really bad and all the shutdowns started, a lot of YouTubers started reporting very low CPMs because a lot of companies were yoinking their advertisements because they were trying to conserve costs because they had teams to pay for or not pay. But because a lot of companies were pulling their advertisements from YouTube, it's my understanding that this freed up a lot of advertisement space. I believe the base cost to advertise here on YouTube got lowered, but I can't say for certain. But we started seeing a lot of interesting ads, and it's not that these ads hadn't been other places and that they hadn't been seen before, but we seemed to get a lot of very interesting ads. For example, there was one that appeared to be for UNICEF, and it ended up being about a guy who really wanted to have sex with Riley Reed. There was a lot of people who had taken out advertisements on YouTube to advertise their OnlyFans. And we started getting a lot of repetitive ads for products here on YouTube as well, including Lit Mobile, which I have previously done a video on. But this past Friday, I started seeing quite a few people complaining about one particular ad on YouTube. The ad was from YT Cash Now, and it said, go to YouTube, download videos, re-upload them to your channel, monetize those videos, and make money from them. I don't think I have to explain to you why people were upset about that. You're smart, you can figure it out. Just in case you don't get it, it's blatantly encouraging stealing of content. Also, a lot of YouTubers, myself included in the past, have dealt with so many issues with companies copyright claiming content. Either they are not allowed to play their video, they've had to silence whole sections, or they are not able to monetize any part of their video. Their video's been blocked in all countries. There's various outcomes to copyright claims here on YouTube. Now they had advertisements being played before their videos, not only encouraging theft, but also encouraging monetizing it when they themselves have had issues with monetizing content that was in fact fair use. If you're a YouTuber that's watching it, I don't know if you've ever had your content like blatantly stolen and re-uploaded. I have, it's not fun. So a couple of people, myself included, went to the website for this advertisement and saw that it was run by a guy named Matt and it was basically one of those mentorship programs where he teaches you how to be successful on YouTube, except his way of doing it is stealing content. Matt claims that he runs nine successful YouTube channels. I am only able to truly confirm one of these channels because it is the only one that he shows his face on and uses his real name. However, I believe I am able to say that this channel where Matt is himself is his least successful channel because he does have two 100,000 subscriber plaques and one 1 million subscriber plaque. However, this channel that I was actually able to definitively attribute to Matt has under 70,000 subscribers. However, on the website, I saw that Matt was advertising a webinar where he told you all about how you could be successful on YouTube without showing your face and without recording your voice. So I thought, I need a video for Friday, why not? After I put my information in, it started like a 14 minute countdown and I just assumed the webinar was like a recorded webinar that you got for free when you gave him your email to add to his email list. Hi, I checked while I was editing and it is in fact a pre-recorded webinar. Here's me checking it while I was editing. But I watched this whole hour webinar and then I watched the whole 45-ish minute q and A. I I turned it off after a certain point. I have no idea how long the Q&A went. The webinar was your standard get rich quick on the internet webinar, nothing crazy, okay? It was Matt pitching himself to us. He showed receipts of all of the money he's been able to make on YouTube. He showed a Google AdSense that showed over $100,000 in ad revenue on it. I can attest that that is a real Google AdSense W2. I can attest that that's how they look because I got the same one for 2019. Mine showed a lot less money, but he blocked out all of the other information aside from the dollar amount. Obviously you don't wanna dox yourself, but all he needed to show is that it said Matt or Matthew and I would believe it was his. I have no way of confirming that this is his W-2. There's no other identifying information that proves that this is his. The entire webinar, he kept talking about the successful channels he had built and again, how he did this and how you were able to do this, but he never identifies the other eight channels that he has. And all of his plaques just say the name Matt. Now, if you go and watch my how to get your hands on your silver play button video, you'll know that you can plug in pretty much anything you want onto that plaque. You can put that you want your plaque to say, I love dick. They may not print it, 
but you can say that that's what you want. So we have no way of identifying his channels. Isn't that kind of, I don't know, that just seems kind of sad to me. You were able to make successful channels, at least three of which are over 100,000 subscribers, one of which is over 1 million subscribers. Like that's an accomplishment. But because of the way that you are successful, you can't take credit for it because you'll get copyright claimed. Someone will file a suit against you. Like there's something that'll happen. Like that's kind of sad, no? Oh yeah, I have all this money, but I can't tell you what the channel name is. Like when I think of success for YouTube, for myself, I think of, you know, that being attributed to myself. You know, I think of my face being attributed to that. I think of my ideas and opinions and my voice being attributed to that. So yeah, Matt can say like, oh yeah, I've made all this money from YouTube. I have all these subscribers, look at these plaques, but he can't like show people his channels. I don't know, I just think that's a little sad. I watched this whole webinar. I watched it on my phone. What was also funny about the live stream is that Matt kept mentioning that his girlfriend was monitoring the chat. However, I highly doubt that she was because there was someone who managed to make it so that every third comment was saying, if you want growth, follow this Instagram account. And it was like one of those buying followers Instagram accounts. And then later on during the Q and A section, there was another person who was saying, this is a scam, Matt's a fraud the entire time. I didn't see her the entire live Live stream. So if she does exist, I don't know what she was doing because it was not monitoring the chat. After Matt went through and explained all of his success and how he started on YouTube when he was young and how he was making more money than his parents at one point, he talks about how you can be financially successful here on YouTube. He talks about channels like Looper and all of these other compilation channels, some of which do not have audio to them and how they just show clips. They get millions and millions of views and you never have to show your face and sometimes you never even have to record a voiceover. Matt says to be successful on YouTube, you need to pick one of three niches, tech, psychology, or meditation. He listed off a couple of channels for each of these niches. At least some of them have been around much longer than he admits to being on YouTube and making videos, so I'm fairly certain he doesn't run these channels. He specifically shows a tech channel and says, now look, if you go down to the description box, they've gone ahead and leaked all of the video sources for the top 10 list that they made for the top 10 coolest whatever. So what you can do is you can go to each of these links and you can use a video downloader tool like this one, this one, or this one, and you can download all these videos edit them together and upload your own video using the same footage that this one channel did. I know there's a lot of different opinions on compilation channels here on YouTube. Personally, I know for myself that there is nothing more cathartic after a rough day at work than going home and typing in employee freakouts and watching a bunch of videos of employees freaking out on customers who are being dicks to them. But I also know that there's a lot of issues with compilation channels as well. A lot of them are just simply taking a bunch of other people's content and compiling them, not doing any commentary, not doing any editing, not doing much of anything, and not that it's not work to go and try and locate clips for the video you're doing that week. But Matt's not telling you to go and scour the internet for clips that you wanna use for your tech videos. No, Matt is telling you to find a tech channel that you like that does compilation videos, go to their description box and just download whatever videos they use. So you're doing even less of the work. Matt's explanation of how you can get into the psychology niche is basically the same. Just get a bunch of facts or clips about psychology, put them in, maybe throw in some copyright free music over it and you're good to go. For the meditation niche, Matt says either find a meditation video that you like, take down the script and then go to Fiverr and pay someone to do your voiceover and throw some copyright free music on it, or even go to Fiverr and pay someone $5 to write a meditation for you, and then either you record it or you hire someone else to record it as well. If it wasn't clear to you already, this is YouTube automation. This is something that's been going around for a long time on YouTube, and it's something that's been pretty heavily criticized on YouTube, I would say. Basically, you're just doing the bare minimum for your channel, and then you are paying other people to make content for you, and you are reaping the benefits of the AdSense or whatever. Obviously, because Matt's a businessman, and he wants to grow his empire of YouTube mastery and monetization, of course, this free program turned into a sales pitch for his uh, private course, his one-on-one -on -one YouTube mastery course. He's selling it for the low price of $997, but don't worry, that's actually way undervalued for the valuation that he gave himself. But since I attended the webinar, I got a discount that lasted for three days for $497. However, for that steal of a price, the one caveat is that you have to guarantee giving him a video testimonial after he helps you, of course. He will help you start your channel and start making money. Just give him 60 days or your money back. No, I didn't fucking give him my money. Are you fucking kidding me? $497? I don't care if it would be a tax write-off. That is too much fucking money. And in the chat of the live stream, it seemed that a lot of people agreed with me. Some people were like, now if you said $97, 
I might be more interested because you seem to know what you're talking about. I do think all of this is bad, and I don't agree with it. However, I do think Matt could have made some money here if he had not been so greedy. $997 for what we're led to believe is your first online course is excessive, regardless of whatever mileage that he has behind him, which we really can't verify because he's not showing us more evidence other than redacted forms and then the plaques that he slapped his first name onto. We have no evidence that any of this is legit. He's just saying words at us at this point. Matt's only goal with doing the webinar and doing the discount was to get video testimonials for his service. As far as we can verify, you're mostly a nobody, so you should have valued this at $497. And then for the discount for being a part of the webinar, it should have been $97. You would have had probably a bunch more people sign up for this because again, you're targeting people who aren't making a lot of money. You're targeting people whose whole goal with starting a YouTube channel isn't fame and success, it's making money. Matt himself acknowledged in his webinar that to do this on YouTube, you don't have to have a lot of money. You just have to start doing a little bit, get yourself to the threshold of making ads, start making some money, and then all of a sudden you're doing great and you're bringing in bank, okay? So he's targeting people, he's advertising this to people who want to start making money and probably aren't making a lot of extra disposable income at this time. Typically these are not people who want to spend $497 on your internet course. Was the smudge that was right here there the whole time? Maybe Matt's right. Maybe I don't want to show my face on camera. <laughs> Yesterday I got another email from Matt. Matt here, you registered for my webinar which was three days ago. On the webinar I showed you how to succeed on YouTube without even making videos. I also announced an opportunity to join my program Tube Mastery and Monetization. We are raising the price on the program so if you are considering it, now is the time to get it. It is severely undervalued at the price I am offering you. Only did this to get a bunch of testimonials quickly, which I have now. Please keep in mind that the nice part about my course is, number one, I do not overcharge. Sure, Jan. Number two, my formula actually works. And number three, once you get the course, you do not need to spend any more money. Yeah, because the money's gone. You took it all. But throughout most of his webinar, and even in one of his more recent YouTube videos where he talks about how you can become successful on YouTube by becoming a horror story reader on YouTube by hiring someone to do your voiceovers. Side note, it's my understanding that though the views are very good on horror stories on YouTube, a lot of them are demonetized because of the subject matter. So yes, you're getting a lot of views, but you may not be making that much money from AdSense because a lot of your videos are demonetized or receiving limited ads. The entire webinar, he's talking about how one of the ways you can do this is by going to Fiverr and hiring people to write your scripts, do your voiceovers, edit your videos. You're not spending no money afterwards, you know? All of the other courses you see online take a continuous dump of money to make them work. Not my course. You're right, your course is different, Matt. Your course just takes one big, steaming dump of cash. Now the next part of this email does make me believe that maybe Matt has been telling the truth and he has been on YouTube for as long as he has and he was making all this money and he is making all this money because this next part shows how out of touch he is. <laughs> I priced this course and created a system so the ordinary person can afford it and succeed with it without having to sell anything to anyone or have any marketing budget. $497 for the average person is not affordable. Can you go and spend $497 on a webinar? I can't, and I now have a good amount of savings set aside because of YouTube. Arguably now I am financially secure, but even with YouTube, even when this is a tax write-off for me, I am not comfortable just dropping $497 on anything, let alone something that's not a sure shot or like something that I can hang on a wall or something. But based on how Matt ran everything in the webinar, there's a lot of evidence to show that he does have some money, whether it's from YouTube or from other things, whether this is it or not. There is evidence to show that he has money, which implies to me that he has, again, a higher scale of living than someone like me who is just now getting some decent cash to her name. Maybe to you and I, this seems absurd, but I think to Matt, he genuinely thinks this is a bargain. He thinks that the valuation he gave this is top notch. I don't necessarily think he's trying to scam everyone here with the price alone. He's definitely trying to scam the internet with how he thinks this is going, but he's succeeding so he doesn't think of it as a scam because no one's called him out on it yet. Hi, welcome, I'm Amanda. Anyway, this is my long drawn out way of saying that stealing content is bad. Let me put it this way, if you are thinking of making a channel, whether it's for money, for exposure, for fame, for whatever, if you are thinking of making a YouTube channel and whatever content you are planning on putting on that YouTube channel makes it so that you think you can't publicly claim that channel as your own, you probably shouldn't be doing it. YouTube, vet your ads. What are you doing? This is not the first time something like this has happened. Step your ad game up. I don't know what the vetting process is for Google ads. I'm assuming it's non-existent based on some of the stuff that has slipped through the cracks in the last couple of months. Clearly there's not much of a vetting process and to 
get it to a point where there's straight up an advertisement that at least implies straight up just steal from other creators. For that to have gotten through whatever checks and balances there is, aside from hitting confirm payment, I don't think there is one. If I do one thing terrible, there's a very real chance you're gonna yoink all my ads, but the fact that like that doesn't go both ways, that I am held to a higher standard than the advertisements that are being held on my channel, that doesn't seem fair. Content creators are just that. We are content for YouTube. There's people making content that you are consuming when you come to YouTube. YouTube is the facilitator, but the content you are consuming is made by individuals or made by groups of people or made by TV shows, whatever, like you get my point. It's no secret that independent creators are held to kind of a high standard when it times to the type of content that we put out on this website. When I upload a video and I hit, I want monetization on, my video is then evaluated, whether it's by the algorithm, whether it's by a manual review, it is evaluated to see if it's suitable for ads to be put on it. I have no say over the ads that are put on my video. I have no say over the duration of the videos. Sure, I can click allow non-skippable ads, but I can't be like, oh, no ads that are longer than 30 seconds or anything like that. I have no control over what political ads are shown on my videos. I have no control over what streaming services are advertised on my videos. And I have no control over what products or services or web courses are advertised on my videos. I believe YouTube ads are targeted based on how old you, the viewer, are. Um, where you're located, what you've previously searched on Google or YouTube, the type of video that you're watching. I have no control over the types of ads or the quality of the ads. YouTube needs to be vetting these ads. There are numerous YouTubers who have had their thumbnails from videos on this website stolen and used for advertisements for apps that steal people's information that are get rich quick apps. There are people who have had their own video clips stolen and used as testimonials when they're not talking about that product. And these are ads that are then put on people's videos by YouTube. The fact that there is no vetting involved in the ad process is ridiculous, frankly, for a company to have no responsibility over the advertisements when I'm not the only one making money from these ads. YouTube is a business, Google is a business. They take a good chunk of money from monetized playbacks. They should be doing better job vetting these ads. Sorry, I went on a tangent. The fact that my makeup keeps getting messed up because I'm sweating, the fact that the sun is now messing up my shot. I think it's time to end this. In conclusion, don't steal from creators. Don't give anyone $497 for a course that may not work. And YouTube, please start vetting ads better. Do not put shit like this on my videos. And that's gonna be it. Thank you for watching. Have you ever given money to a questionable online course? Do you think you have an idea of any of the other eight channels that might belong to Matt? Let me know. Comment down below. Shout out to my patrons. Thank you so much for supporting my Patreon. If you'd also like to support my Patreon, the link will be listed down below. If you'd like to follow me on all my social media, that'll be all up here. And that's gonna be it. Have a lovely day. Goodbye. Can't wait for all the comments that are like, is your AC broken? My AC is not broken. My AC works fantastically, but it's also quite loud. It interferes with the audio recording. And I'm filming this way too late in the day. Thank you, Aaron, Adam, Alan, Elise, Brighton, Young, Cameron, Cameron D, Christopher, Chris, Cody, Colton, Crash, PC, Don, Elliot, Aaron, Essen, Evan, Feckless, Hopeless, Jason, John, M, Jonathan, Jordan, Kenneth, Kenny, Kevin, Kim, Lee, Lisa, Manga, Matt, Matthew, Matthew S, Meme Lord Red, Michael, Michael J, Nathaniel, Prylock, Rob, Sam, Stefan, Frugal Filmmaker, Timothy, Torben, Tom, Victor, Wendy, Williams, Andre.